Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. How is everyone today? Thank you so much for joining this collaboration edition of Notion at Work. Can everybody hear me okay? Would you mind confirming in the chat? Anthony, thank you. Anthony from Tennessee. I appreciate it. Um, well, as I said, uh, we'll be covering um, collaboration today, Notion's features for uh for team collaboration where multiple users can contribute content and communicate with one another i am william nutt of nut labs we're an integrated digital strategy firm and notion consultancy based in new york and currently based in my manhattan apartment that seems to get smaller by the hour um but uh we uh, are going to just jump right in. I, uh, I'm going to do kind of a, an overview of uh, terms and concepts, and then we'll take some questions afterwards. So you can use um, Crowdcast's Ask a Question feature to submit your questions. If you're streaming on YouTube, there should be a link to that Crowdcast um, live stream in the description so that you can use the Ask a Question feature. So let's, uh, let's jump into it. So, of course, an important part of collaboration and Notion is going to be how you share pages. And in a previous edition of Notion at Work, I covered sharing all the nuances of sharing and um, the various access levels. So in the YouTube um, recording of this edition, we will include links to that one. And there's also a post on Notion VIP, which is the website um, that I run about Notion. Um, both of those links will be in the description of this video so that you can dive into those. But I'll also uh, offer kind of a high level overview of sharing and permissions here. So it's important to remember that when you share pages in Notion, you're also sharing the sub pages of those pages or the pages that you create within those pages. And uh, I'm going to um, maximize my shared screen here. Um, and those pages, those sub pages that, uh, that you, the, the, the sub pages of the pages that you share are going to inherit the access level that you specify for that top level shared page. So in Notion, you're going to be working with four different access levels. At the bottom is just can read, meaning visitors can only view the content. They can't comment on it, they can't modify it, and they can't extend access to other users. And then the can comment access level is going to allow Notion users to comment on the content of the page. And then the can edit access level is going to allow visitors to view, comment on, and actually modify the content of the page. And then the highest level access is full access, meaning the folks that you share it with can obviously view it, they can comment on it, they can modify the content, and they can extend access to other users and choose their access levels. So as I tend to do, I've created a visual hierarchy of sharing in Notion. So at the highest level, you'll share Notion pages publicly and you'll share them with individual users. So public pages are gonna be viewable by anyone on the web who has access to your share URL. And with public pages, you can specify either can read or can edit, or I mean, um, can um, read or can comment access. So if you add can comment access to a public Notion page, then any Notion user who signed into their account is gonna have the ability to add comments to your page's content. But when it comes to collaboration, you're typically gonna be sharing with individual users. So within individual users, you have guests, and you have members, and guests are non-members of your workspace. And when you share a page with a guest, that guest is gonna need a Notion account and, be, and need to be signed into it in order to access your page. So if you invite a guest who doesn't already have a Notion account, they'll be prompted to create one, and then they'll be nurtured through Notion's onboarding process. 
and you share individual pages with guests. You don't uh, you don't invite the guests to your entire workspace. And when you invite them to an individual page, for each page, you'll specify an access level for each guest. So then members share your workspace. In, in the context of Notion at work, they'll typically be your colleagues. And like guests, you can invite individual members to individual pages and specify any of the four access levels. But you can also make pages available to all members by toggling on the workspace access option. And when you do that, you can choose from any of the four access levels as well. And then we have groups, and groups allow you to share pages with members as units. So rather than sharing a page with the entire workspace or with a collection of individuals, you might have a marketing group, for example, where you can, have, you can share marketing-centric pages with that specific group of members without sharing the pages with them individually. And for each group, you can specify a level of access for each page, too. So members are available on the team and enterprise plans. They're not part of the free Notion plans. So for these upcoming demonstrations, we're going to be working in this page within my fictitious workspace of Loggerhead Labs. Um, and in this page, I'm collaborating with two colleagues, Stephen and Carly, and we are working on an email for our client, Sweetgreen, and the email is an announcement of a late winter menu for customers. So when you invite an individual user to a page, when that user visits the page for the first time, their avatar is going to appear at the top of the page. And you can hover your cursor over an avatar to show the user's name, email address, and the last time that they viewed the page. And the avatars are going to be ordered according to the last time they viewed the page. So the most recent viewer is going to be furthest to the left. Yours will really be the furthest to the left, but then the other ones will be ordered according to when they last viewed the page. And typically, those avatars are going to be faded. But if the user is actively viewing the page, then the avatar will fill to full opacity. So you can see that Steven Taylor here is actively viewing the page. And I'm actually going to be trying to play the part of Steven and myself here. So there will be inevitable moments of confusion. Please forgive those in advance. So Steven is actively viewing the page. and as an active viewer navigates the page, the avatar is actually going to follow them from block to block on your screen. So you can see here, over here, I'm jumping around as Steven. You can see that his avatar is moving from block to block. And I don't anticipate that Crowdcast will capture the animation um, very well, but I assure you it is a smooth animation. So any of your collaborators with the appropriate act level of access can leave comments within the content of the page. And there's kind of three types of comments. You can leave comments on individual text snippets. You can leave comments on full blocks. And then you can leave comments at uh, kind of the top, uh, top level of the page. So let's look at an example of each. To, to leave a comment on a text snippet, you'll highlight the snippet. And when you highlight the snippet, you'll have the option to click comment on the menu that appears or the keyboard shortcut, depending on what type of computer you're on, will either be command or control, and then shift and M. And that's going to prompt the new comment screen. So let's say here that we want to recommend breaking this one sentence into two smaller sentences. We'll just suggest let's break this into two smaller sentences. And then once you type your comment, you can either hit send or hit enter. And what that's, what that's going to do in the case of a snippet is it's going to highlight the snippet, and it's also going to add this speech bubble to the right of the block. And any user can click either the snippet or the speech bubble to show the comment. So you can also, as I said, you can comment on full blocks. And to do that, you'll click on this six-dotted icon next to the block, and that'll give you the option to comment as well. 
So we have pears with kimchi on this late winter menu, but we're not quite sure the pears will be ready. So let's question that. Are we sure the pears will be ready? And then we can hit enter or click send. And so this is gonna give us another speech bubble to the right of the block. It's not going to highlight the text within the block because we're commenting on the entire block. And once again, you can click the speech bubble to show the comment. And then the third type of comment is this top level page comment. And this is good for kind of high level discussions about the content of the page. Um, and within database pages, such as this one, this is a page within a database that has properties. This comment area is already gonna be in place by default, but on other pages, you'll have the option to add the discussion along with adding your cover and adding your icon. So you'll just hover over the title of the page and click add discussion. So in the case of these database pages, this, is, this area is also helpful for commenting on the specific properties because you can't comment on the properties um, themselves. So let's just, sit, let's comment on our send date and we'll just note that the send date is pending pair availability. So we'll go ahead and submit that comment. So we've made one of each of the three types of comments. So like I said, you can click on either the speech bubble or in the case of text snippets, you can click on that to show the comment. And if you open the comment, you'll see that you have the option to add a comment. Any user can add a comment. So really these comments can be full ongoing threads rather than just individual comments. So as Steven, I'm gonna add a comment to our kimchi comment. Of course, you can't see that, but you can see him jump down to it. And uh, I'm just gonna say that I'll check with Kay from Sweetgreen. So Steven's gonna check with the client about the pair availability. And we can see that the number within our speech bubble here for this comment has ticked up to two. And we can click on that and we can see Steven's comment. So any for any of your own comments, you're gonna have the option to click on this three dotted icon, which will allow you to edit your comment. You can delete the comment, and then you can also resolve the discussion. So that's just gonna hide the entire, uh, this entire thread, meaning that, you know, whatever was in question has been resolved. So I'm gonna do that here. And if you go up to your updates menu at the top of the page, that's gonna include that comment that was just resolved. Um, and uh, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at this menu in just a second. So that is comments. Let's look at mentions. And mention, in, in Notion, you can mention people, and you can mention pages. And you can mention people and pages within comments and within the body of your page. So depending on what type of document you're collaborating on, you may uh, choose to mention them in comments or within the actual body of the content. And we'll take a look at a couple of examples. So um, let's um, go up to our comments up here and we are going to mention our colleague Carly and um, we're going to have her confirm with Kay the client instead of having Steven confirm with Clay, Kay the client about the pair availability. So um, just as with Twitter and other social platforms you'll create a mention by typing the at symbol. So let's say I'll have Carly confirm with Kay. So to add a mention of Carly I'm going to type the at symbol, and then start typing her name. And that's gonna bring up the mention menu where we can click on Carly or just hit enter. And then I'll just finish my comment here, confirm with K. So when I hit enter here or click the send button, Carly's gonna receive a notification that she's been mentioned. So the purpose really of a mention is to send an alert to that person and uh, when she receives it, she'll um, receive it in the context of the comment. So she'll see this 
full comment here in her notifications. And we'll look at what receiving those alerts looks like. So another form of mentioning it's worth noting is that if you're familiar with the person property of databases, you can add members of your workspace to that person property um, or, or guests of the database. And when you add them to those properties, they're, it's basically like mentioning them and they're gonna receive alerts in the same ways. So that's mentioning people. Like I said, you can also mention pages. And when you mention a page, that is going to use the title of the page. It's gonna add the title of the page wherever you mention it. And that title is gonna serve as a link to the page, which is useful. And that title is also gonna re remain dynamic so that if you rename the page, it's going to update the title wherever you mentioned it. So in this fictitious Loggerhead Labs world, we have another project. This is a late winter menu email, but we have a seasonal menu microsite that we're developing. And we want the microsite to align with this late winter menu. So let's just make note of that. Let's be sure the, and then this is where we want to mention the seasonal menu microsite. So just as we did with the person, we'll start with the at symbol and begin typing the name of the page that we want to reference. So that is seasonal menu, and there it appears within our mention menu. So we can click on that, and you can see that it's populated with the full title of the page, and it's a link to the page. So let's be sure the seasonal menu microsite aligns, and then we can just hit send there. So that's mentioning people and pages. Somewhat similar to people and pages are date references. So you can mention or reference dates within the body of your page. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a link. It's going to make the, the date a link that you can click to quickly change the date or select among a few different options. So let's add a line here to this part of the email that says, they're all yours until April 31st. So when we, or April 30th, when we um, reference this date, we're gonna once again use the at symbol to initiate it. And we'll type April 30th. And we can choose that from the menu that appears. And you can see that that has made this date a link. So if we click the link, we can choose a new date quickly. We can add a specific time to the date, and we can also make it a date span with an end date. We also have the option to make it a reminder. So we can choose to get an alert at a time relative to the time that we've specified for that date. And then you can also choose to format your date in a few different ways. So there's actually another way to create a reminder that's similar to this with a, with a reference date. So let's create another little section here where we can just add some reminders. And we have this ongoing issue with our pair availability, so let's just stick to that. And let's create a reminder to check on the status of the pairs on Friday. So we'll just write check pair status on Friday. So we're going to include another date reference like we did previously, but we're going to start it with the word remind. So we'll, we'll still use the at symbol to initiate it and type remind. And then we can type Friday. We can use um, friendly relative phrasing for Friday. And um, that creates a date reference that is a reminder. And we can see that with the clock icon and it's colored blue, meaning it's an upcoming reminder. Past reminders that have expired are going to appear as red. And speaking of using that friendly language, I wanted uh, also to mention that the default format for a date reference is going to be what's called relative. So if you go into date format here, you're gonna see relative as the option. And what that means is that it uses some friendly phrasing for dates uh, that are close to the current date. So if we were to pick a different uh, date here, one that's closer to today, if we were to pick tomorrow's date, rather than just showing the month and the numbered day, it's actually gonna show tomorrow. 
And then if you choose an upcoming, another upcoming day that's just a little bit further into the future, but still within the next week, it's going to show the day of the week. So if we choose Friday, it's going to say Friday. And then this will remain dynamic. So tomorrow, this would say tomorrow, which is helpful uh, in a variety of different ways. So within this type of reminder, you can actually mention a person to have them receive the reminder as well. So this is going to remind us on Friday um, to check in to, uh, it, it'll just show the context of this, of this uh, text so we'll know what we're being reminded about. But if we want to instead say have, Char remind Carly to check the status on Friday, what we can do is mention her with the at symbol, just like we did before, Carly, and select her, and we can just say, please check pair status on Friday. So now Carly, she's gonna receive this initial uh, notification for this mention, but then on Friday, she's gonna receive the alert as well. And um, we'll also, I'll, I'll also receive the alert because I created it. So we briefly took a look at this updates section up here, and let's take a, another quick look at it. So I mentioned that it includes resolved comments, but it also includes unresolved comments. It's gonna actually have all of the activity for your page, the comments resolved and unresolved, as well as all the updates that are made to your page. And on paid plans, you're gonna have the option to view snapshots of your page history. You can do that by clicking on the clock icon, and that's gonna show the version of the page at the time that the change was made, and you have the option to restore the version. Um, and that's really a critical feature, um, as many of you may have experienced before. So at the top of the window here, you have the option to follow the page, and you're automatically gonna follow pages that you create and pages that you make edits to. So um, but you can follow other pages that you have access to. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna include all of these updates within your, your all updates section here. And I'm actually not gonna dive into that all updates section today because there are some exciting changes coming for that. And that's all I'll say about that. But um, you can look forward to that. It's pretty straightforward though. Um, those, uh, these updates among some others will appear in that section. You'll also receive a digest of updates by email for the pages that you follow. And then you also have the option here to uh, connect this page to a Slack channel. So if you toggle that on, you'll, be, you'll sign into Slack and choose a channel. And within that channel, this full feed of updates um, will be included within that channel. So we've talked a lot about kind of creating notifications. Um, let's talk a little bit about where you'll see those uh, notifications as a recipient. So by default, you're gonna receive notifications for your mentions, for your reminders. Um, sorry if you can hear the First Avenue motorcycles in the background. Uh, your mentions, your reminders, comments on the pages that you follow, and then uh, invitations to new pages when, when other users invite you to pages. And you're gonna see those alerts in a few different places. So I'm just quickly, as Steven, gonna mention William so that we can get another alert. So we can see Steven's avatar making these changes here on this page. And we can now see that I have a new alert. And um, we know that because of this numbered badge that appears next to all updates. So that numbered badge is obviously going to indicate um, the number of updates that you have. And again, we're not diving into all updates at the moment, but uh, on your mobile devices, you're going to have um, a similar numbered badge. Uh, at the bottom of the app, there's a footer um, that's actually relatively new. Um, and that footer menu, that footer bar includes a um, bell icon that will display your badge, your numbered badge here as well. And on your phones, you're also going to receive a push notification. And um, 
That is unless you engage with the update within five minutes, or if you're actively viewing the trigger page, the page that triggers the alert, you won't receive that push notification either. And then finally, you're gonna receive the alert by email as well, and that is unless you have Notion's desktop app or mobile app open at the time that the alert is triggered. So you can modify these preferences in settings and members, and then within my notifications. And here you have the ability to toggle off those push notifications, as well as the email notifications. So, like I said, uh, I'm not going to jump into all updates. That was originally part of the plan, um, but uh, there are some changes coming there soon. So with that, that wraps up these various features um, for collaborating in Notion. And um, I have posted on Notion VIP a text post that covers all of this uh, in detail, which you may want to reference um, along with the recording of this video. Um, in another video that, we'll, that I'll be putting together along with that post. So you'll have all these resources to reference um, as you collaborate with your teams. And if you hit any roadblocks, um, please feel free to tweet at me anytime. Um, you can find me at William Nutt. And um, if you happen to subscribe to that Notion VIP newsletter, then you can just hit reply to any addition. So um, with that, I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have now. Um, and I will be looking at those within the Ask a Question feature of Crowdcast. So please um, feel free to submit yours there. So um, Dennis says, hey there, are you guys planning on adding Apple Pencil support for the iOS version of Notion? So a few reasons why this, uh, why I'm, can't really answer that now. One is that um, I am uh, not on the Notion team technically and not um, working on that part of the product. So Dennis, I would encourage you to uh, use that um, question mark icon at the bottom of Notion and let the team know uh, that that is a priority for you. They know it's a big priority for a lot of users, but that um, always helps. Uh, and then um, we have, hey, is there anything on the roadmap for an integration with Microsoft Teams? A lot of companies where I live, China, are adopting the tool, and it'd be great to see Notion integration. So kind of the same explanation. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I can't really speak to that. But um, I do know that integrations in general are a high priority for Notion. We all know that we're eager to see um, an API that will allow for virtually unlimited integrations. Um, so um, we can hope that Microsoft Teams integration uh, will either be a part of that or another part of the pipeline soon. But we can see a lot of existing integrations with other productivity tools in Notion, such as Evernote and Slack, as we just looked at. Um, so hopefully um, Microsoft Teams support will be a part of that. And then Edgar asks two questions. Question A, can two or more work on a project simultaneously? Please show an example. So Edgar, I'm not sure when you submitted this, but hopefully um, <laughs> I answered that question for you through those demonstrations we walked through. And if not, um, definitely please feel free to reach back out to me for another demo. And then question B, can you see what areas are others actively working on? Please help. So no, you you can't. Regardless of your uh, level of access, um, you are unable to see where uh, where other members are actively working. Um, other than other than if you're on the same page, as we saw, that avatar um, kind of follows the user around. So in that case, you can see the user. Um, interacting with each block on the page. Homesick Mac, that is an ironic name, um, given that we're all, we're all at home uh, right now for the most part. In Trello, I can assign a person to a specific card. This compares to Notion share and in, uh, invite a person, and I did that. Cannot see their icons as in your setup. I'm on a team plan. 
So Homesick Mac, those icons are going to appear on the page after they visit it for the first time. Their avatar is not going to appear um, when you initially invite them. But if you're an administrator of your workspace, what you can do is you can go into um, settings. Uh, you can go into settings and members. And if you scroll down to settings and members, you're going to be able to see all of your members and all of your guests. And for your guests, you can see exactly which pages they've been invited to. So hopefully that helps. And then Anthony, is that Anthony from Tennessee again? Thank you, Anthony. I might have missed this question um, when I stepped out for a few minutes, but can all the comments and discussions on a page be seen when a public page is shared? So, um, Anthony, that is a good question. I actually would need to tinker with that. So when you share a page publicly, you can designate it as can read and can comment. So my inclination is to say that comments on a can read page are going to be hidden, but comments on a can comment page are going to be visible. That I will, again, need to tinker with, um, but um, that's a good question. So that is all the questions in our Ask a Question feature. We're actually two minutes over our 30-minute time span here. But um, thank you so much for those great questions and your engagement within the chat. It's fun to have people from so many different places. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful. And um, like I said, there'll be some other resources uh, to come. And if you hit any roadblocks, then um, you know where to find me on Twitter. So thank you so much. And everybody um, stay safe and healthy.